The neuroscientist who, quote, lost her mind, her phrase, not mine. Barbara Lipsko was a scientist, the director of the Human Brain Bank at the National Institute of Mental Health, specializing in schizophrenia. She'd been studying mental illness and human brain developments for three decades. She's a triathlete, a wife, mother, and grandmother. When one day, suddenly, she realized she had a brain tumor that was affecting her vision. The tumor was removed, but then new ones kept appearing, completely changing her personality. It's a story she recounts in her new book, her, quote, tale of madness and recovery. Barbara Lipsko joins me now. Barbara, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks so much My for being pleasure. here. My pleasure. Thank first, you. What were the first manifestations of problems with your brain? What's the first symptom so, you saw? What, first, I lost my hand, mm -hmm. which is kind of weird, but it disappeared. From, from my, your vision? Yeah. I was looking down at the computer, keyboard, and my hand disappeared. And was, were you, based on your experience, were you, your expertise, were you able to understand right away what was going on? I did, but I expelled that thought as soon as it entered my mind. It was too scary, too deadly. I understood it immediately. How fast did things start going downhill? Uh, well, I had surgery to remove the tumors. Uh, then I was put in, on immunotherapy trial uh, because we knew that... I had melanoma, metastatic melanoma tumors in my brain, and I would die within four to seven months. So we had to do something different, and it was immunotherapy. But, but it, it, how fast did the one symptom become the, the worst of what you Immunotherapy did it, that mm -hmm. I lost my mind. It inf in inflamed the tumors or the cells, melanoma cells that were still in my brain. Explain what lost my mind means. You, you use that as a term of art. Uh, well, you, because <laughs> but, you have experts. Oh, what does that mean? What did that mean in your life? But it's really kind of literal. I could not understand the world around me. Give me I, an example. I couldn't hold a conversation. I was in a hurry. I was very irritated by everything and anything. I was yelling at people. I would start doing something and I was off to something else. And I was doing very strange things like running in the street with the hair color put on my hair, down your head. dripping and staining. And I didn't notice it because I lost insight. How about your the pizza guy story? Tell us about <laughs> that. I'm glad you can laugh. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell us about what you thought the pizza guy was doing. Uh, so there was a pest control guy and a pizza incident. Pizza we brought home, I ate it, and I was up, and it didn't, I didn't feel right after that. I threw it up, and I saw plastic swirling in the toilet bowl. Mm. I was absolutely sure that I was poisoned. The, the pest control guy was a very similar incident. I thought he wanted to poison us when he came with the sprays. And, and you didn't know? No. You had no idea when you were experiencing all of this No far. idea. You had no idea, even though those around you, your no. family, your two kids are doctors, correct? Yes. And so they all had a sense of what you're experiencing, but you had no sense. Well, I had no, I, I, I lost complete awareness that... I behave strangely. And they didn't right away knew either because I was very stressed out. After all, I was handed a death sentence. And, 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 well, that's where I wanted to go. Most people who live with what you had to live with don't come here to tell me about the book they wrote and <laughs> are still breathing, right? Yes, that's right. At the time that I was diagnosed, it was four to seven months to live. So most, what did you learn considering the scientist you are? What did you learn from that experience that so, uh -huh. makes you better in some ways or more knowledgeable than you were before this suffering? I think it, it made me an advocate for mentally ill people because now I have experienced what it means to be mentally ill. I'm not only knowing it, which I did before, I know that it's a brain disease, that has to be treated as any other illness. Like any other physical illness? Uh, any other physical illness. It's no fault of anybody. It's not a matter of weak or strong willpower. It is a physical illness. Did you what? not know that before? Yes, I did. But you didn't know it in a visceral sort of way? Yes. Is that what it is? Yes, it is like knowing about the country 
and then going and <laughs> visiting the country, it's very different. If you s smell the smells, if you see the sights, if you touch things, it's completely different. Are you a different person? I, I mean, in addition to what you learned, are you a different person because of what happened to your brain? I, I, I think so. I, How so? It opened my mind into suffering of people. So many people suffer, and the families suffer even more than mentally ill people because often the patients don't even know about the fact that they are ill, but the families terrified. Do you, the fact, were you aware that so many people with that level of mental illness are not aware of their state. Did you know that before you experienced I, it? I did know the fact, but I didn't know what it means. I, I thought it's maybe something like a denial. It's hard to understand what it means not to be aware. You're doing things and you're not aware. It's not that I lost memory and I even remember these facts, but I was unaware of them. Do you that. remember now what you lived through, even though you didn't understand it when you were living through yeah, it? Yeah, I needed help, to tell you the truth, with the facts, but especially with emotions attached to these facts. Are you scared that this is going to yes, return? Yes, I'm terrified. How do you cope with that? Uh, You're smiling almost <laughs> for this whole... No, I'm serious. How do you cope with that? I think it's part of my personality. I smile through things, and I... As you said, I'm a triathlete. Uh, it's, I am going to the finish line, whatever it is, and whatever pain it takes, I will finish. Uh, so, I, I don't know if I trained for this. I never knew that I would be training for anything but races, but I was training for my survival. That's a beautiful line, and you did. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Congratulations Thank on you. your book. Thank you. The book, again, is The Neuroscientist Who Lost Her Mind, My Tale of Madness and Recovery.